I am telling you that I was failing. I got 30%, not once, but twice. Sanbonani, my name is Andy Swa, a UCT medical student, and welcome back to Becoming Dr. Andy. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you so much for watching one of my videos once again. And if you are new here, I hope you do stay and become a part of my journey as I become Dr. Andy. So I've decided to start this new series called My Journey, where I sit down and share with you guys all of my experiences in med school. Because I started this YouTube channel four years into med school, you guys have no idea what I have been through during those four years. So I thought it's best for me to start this series by sharing with you my experiences from first year. I know most of you know me as the student who got seven distinctions in high school, but you don't really know how my performance went from high school to university or how I am currently performing in med school and i'm about to fill you in with all of that for those who are new here i went to sagerland secondary school and i completed my metric in 2017 with seven distinctions and i got accepted in university of cape town for medicine right after my metric and i started my first year in 2018. so on this video i'm going to share with you how my marks went from this to the ones I am going to be sharing in this video. So before I went to med school, I thought med school is like life sciences with practicals, obviously. I thought it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, I went from studying seven subjects in high school. Now I'm only gonna be studying one, which is life sciences, and it's gonna be practical. So obviously it's gonna be easy. I'm gonna ace that thing. I was lying to myself. Like, Benitit Kambilamang. In figure in first year, they told me, you're gonna do physics. You're gonna do chemistry. And you're gonna do languages. I don't know how I felt. Obviously, we did human biology as well, but I didn't know that we we're gonna do all the other stuff that in my mind are not related to medicine so in first year first semester you get to study chemistry physics human biology and becoming a professional at uct becoming a professional is where you study your family medicine your languages in uct you study afrikaans and it's a closer i've never taken an afrikaans class in my entire life so you had to pass all of these four courses if you failed one you are going to repeat the whole year so at uct there's this thing called extended program where they send you to if you failed any of these courses in first semester like if you were to fail either physics chemistry human biology or this becoming a professional you are going to be sent to the extended program where you spend the next whole year doing that course that you failed. So I knew that if I failed any of these courses, I was gonna be adding a year into this degree. When I got there, those chemistry tarts killed me. Like I'm tablet 10 nil. We had to do tutorials every week where you go there, they teach you something and then at the end of that you write a test, right? I am telling you that I was failing. I was failing those tutorials. So these are my results from those tarts in first year. I got 30%, not once, but twice. I got 27%. And the thing that was demoralizing is that those tarts were like out of 20. So I would get like a four, a five, a two. And it was crazy. So the chemistry, is more or less similar to the high school chemistry and to be quite honest chemistry was not my strongest point in physical sciences i didn't really enjoy chemistry that much especially when it comes to acids and bases and titrations and that was what we were doing the most in med school so we also had class tests 
and those tests had negative marking so for test one i got 77 percent of which if you ask me that's great like that is a distinction with the negative marking on top of that i was literally so proud of myself because that chemistry was not easy going from 30 percent to 27 percent for those tutorials to getting a 77 percent in the first class test ever in med school that was brilliant okay and then moving on to class test two things went down i got 59 percent obviously with negative marking okay it was it was difficult i think with class test two things were a bit hectic because we were so deep in those practicals titrations balancing and whatsoever and i don't really quite remember what we were studying so with those tutorials we also had practicals that we were doing every week and shame i was doing well in those practicals i don't want to lie and i think they boosted me when it comes to my final mark so moving on to physics i don't know where my physics marks went i can't find them on the website unfortunately but i have my final mark that i'm going to be sharing at the end of the video but according to my memory i wasn't doing that bad in physics but obviously it was a huge drop from the 98 okay lawyer expectations i think i was getting around 70s including practicals including tests because Physics was my strongest point in physical sciences and I really enjoyed it and I got there we were doing forces, work and energy, hydraulics and all of those fun stuff and we had practicals as well to demonstrate that of which we didn't have in high school but still I never got above 80. I was getting 70 somethings which was a decent mark. We didn't have negative marking for physics moving on to the core course the most important one which is human biology yeah it deserved a moment of silence because i am telling you i was seeing flames i was seeing flames that course showed me flames and I'm going to tell you one thing, med school is not difficult, med school is not difficult, the difficult thing in med school is that number one, you learn a new topic every day and they never go back to it. So if you have five lectures today, all of them are about different topics, you have different lectures one will tell you for example they will teach you mitosis for 45 minutes and you will never hear about mitosis again up until you write your exam unlike in high school where a teacher will spend two weeks teaching mitosis giving you homeworks coming back making corrections you have multiple tests before your big exam in university it's not like that they teach you different topics every day and at the end of the week you have about 20 different topics or 20 lectures that they taught you during the week that you have to make sure that you've mastered before you move on to the next week and sometimes it would happen that i didn't finish all my lectures for the day and i am behind because even tomorrow they're gonna add five more lectures the next day five more lectures and during the weekend i find myself trying to catch up while at the same time i have to prepare for the next week so the thing that makes people fail in med school it's not because the content is hard the content is really not hard the hardest thing there is time management if you're not going to be able to manage your time to be able to go over your work over and over again revise and make sure that you've memorized everything you're not going to make it and I think that was the thing that was most difficult for me because when it comes to high school, honestly, they went over the same thing over and over again. Literally, you had no chance not to get it. For my first assessment in human biology, I got 
for someone who has been getting above 90s in life sciences it is this is evident that this is not life sciences even though the content in first year first semester it was really similar because they were teaching basics that is why life sciences is not a requirement in medicine because in first year they teach life science more or less the pass mark was 50 percent so there were no negative marking no adjustments second assessment i got a 60 still a pass a bad and not too bad but yeah it's a whole job 30 percent job from how i was performing when it comes to life sciences in high school when it comes to second semester you do human biology which is like an advanced version which is more advanced than the one you were doing in first semester things got real things got really bad because i started failing i started failing the main reason was that pass mark was no longer 50 percent it was 55 so if you got 55 that's a 50. if you got a 60 that's a 55 more or less not exactly but more or less if you got a 50 you failed if you got a 53 you failed you had to get 55 percent upwards to pass and if you got an 80 it was not going to be 80 it was going to be adjusted down to a 50 percent scale i don't know if that makes sense that human biology was difficult because now we were doing biochemistry which is something we have never done in high school we were learning the Krebs cycle in so much detail, I want to cry. Even at this point, while I am sitting, I do not know why we had to learn about acetyl-CoA. That is literally the only thing I remember from biochemistry because that word was just, I don't know, strange. I don't know, we learned about a different whole mechanism, micro molecules, and we had to memorize different diagrams, different systems. It was just hard. And we were doing anatomy. We were doing, we were doing anatomy. We were doing physiology and all of that stuff. So it was no more like your basic biology. It was more, more complex. So for my first SAQ, I got 30%. They give you those marks already adjusted. Like, they don't even want to tell you that this is how it could have been if the pass mark was 50. They just give you the marks adjusted. I got a 30% and that is horrible, right? I was afraid for my life because still right now, if you fail any course, you're going to repeat the whole year. You're going to repeat that course for the next year. And... For the IPA, I got 49%. Of which, if pass mark was 50, I could have passed. So after, after that IPA and SAQ, the only assessment left was the final IPA and SAQ. That's why I was saying that you don't get tested that often. So you don't get to correct your mistakes or learn something over and over again by taking tests that often so we only had two tests and that was it so for the final exam the girl had to work extra hard i got a 56 <laughs> for the saq and that is my hard work that is my sleepless night they gave me that mark already adjusted and to be quite honest that is the most difficult thing about med school you will work hard sleepless nights in order for you to just get a pass and when it comes to the ipa i got a 52. to be quite honest i was happy that i passed i got to a point where i am happy that i passed i do not care about a distinction anymore I am happy that I passed. 
that's where I got to. Now I'm about to reveal my final results for first year. So when it comes to chemistry, I got a 64%. Thank God. Thank God I didn't fail chemistry in first year. I passed. I got a 64%. Not a great mark. Very, very low compared to my physical science mark. But I did it. <laughs> I did it. When it comes to physics, I got a 74%. So close to a distinction, but I was happy. It's a huge job from my physical science mark as well. But I am glad that I passed that course. Going to the human biology in first semester, I got 62% of which I was doing quite well in it because I got a 60 for my first assessment and a 65 for my second assessment. And going to the more advanced human biology in second semester, I got a 59%. That was the mark that I got for my final result. It was really low, um, but I did my best. So yes, I did drop from high school to first day university. It was a huge drop, a drop that I didn't expect. I got to understand that university is different from high school. Their teaching style is different, testing style is different, pass marks and all of that stuff. Was first year the hardest year in med school? No, it wasn't. It was just challenging to transition from high school to university and the adjustments, living address and all of that stuff. It was really hard for me. And to be quite honest, I was not expecting myself to get like distinctions the same way I did in high school. I went there with an open mind. And for me to expect the same experience that I had in high school was going to be so unrealistic. So the reason why I made this video was to let people know that university and high school is very different. You can be a top achiever in high school and get to university and start failing. You just have to adjust, work hard and get back up where you fall. So if you're a person who's doing first year right now or you're a person who's about to do first year, please be easy on yourself. Please be open minded. If you fail, get back up again and work hard. Failure doesn't define you. You have a long journey ahead of you that you still need to travel, okay? You can't still be stuck on that test or on that touch that you failed. Life has to move on. And for parents who have their children as med students, I am begging you to be supportive as much as possible. Do not ever expect your child to be still getting those 90% they were getting in high school, in med school, because med school is difficult. Parents should stop saying that if now you are not getting the same marks you were getting in high school, it means now you are playing in varsity, you are not focusing on your books. I am telling you in first year, I didn't have a life. The only thing I knew were my books. I was staying up all night and studying, but still I was failing. So the most important thing that kept me going is remembering why I started and where I was going. I knew that I wanted to be a doctor and I wasn't going to give up on my dream as easy as that. And so I learned to adjust in that way and I learned to be easy on myself because I was doing this for the first time. There was no way I was going to master it the first time I've done it. So every time I fell, I would try and work hard again and get back up up until i made it so we've come to the end of the video i hope you did enjoy the video and you've learned a thing or two in order for you not to miss any episode of this series make sure that you click your notification button so that you can be notified every time i post a video and if you want to know more about the medical degree i have started a new channel called medicine explained where i'll be explaining to you the medical degree in simple terms so, so please go subscribe to that channel i'll see you again on my next video bye for now